Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good day to everyone who uh, might be listening to this episode. I'm Kevin Stafford, your host on the Coffee with Coaches podcast. Uh, today, I have with me Tom Henschel. I'm going to read a little bit blurb, and then we're going to get right into it, because as you can probably see from the smile on my face, he's fantastic, and I'm excited to get to share him with you today. Tom has been coaching senior corporate leaders for more than 30 years. Um, we'll maybe get into some of his, his client roster in a bit, but I did scroll through his LinkedIn and found the likes of Disney and HP. Um, ever heard of them? Uh, he helps to soften disruptive executives and amplify the look and sound of leadership. It's a really important phrase there. The look and sound of leadership also happens to be the name of his podcast, which is now in its 13th year and ranks in the top 1% out of all 3 million or so podcasts globally. Tom, Thank you for being here. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. It's great to talk. To Fantastic already. Um, let's dig into it. Um, let's start at the beginning. What got you into coaching? What prompted you to begin a coaching practice, this practice that you've been at for over 30 years? This is my second career, but I started as a, a trainer. And uh, one of my very first jobs training presentation skills. I was at a financial company and uh, the head of HR said to me, this went great. I, could you work one-on-one -on -one with three of our division presidents? And it wasn't even called coaching in those days, right? That got me into coaching. And, and it was a really good fit for me. I loved working one-on-one. -on -one. I loved working with senior people. And then I got pulled into a coaching company. And this was in the days when coaching, it wasn't even called coaching. And uh, usually if senior leaders were getting a coach, they thought they were getting fired, right? That it was a bad news thing. Like, oh my God, I have a coach. Don't come to my office. I don't want anybody to know. But <laughs> uh, I got pulled into this company and I learned on the job. So yeah, it was great. That's fantastic. I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, but yeah, you were coaching before it was called coaching. I feel like it's a pretty good way to describe it. Like before it even had a proper name, you were there. <laughs> and, and it was seen as punishment. You know, yeah. which is not what it is anymore. I mean, now it's a perk, it's an investment, it, you know, it's a it's a reward. Mm -hmm. But in those days, it was not. So it's really I've gotten to see it really change and grow. Awesome to to, to use a common word for an uncommon journey. Um, let's. I'd love to talk about what makes your coaching practice unique. And I'm sure we can go a number of different places here, given your depth and breadth of experience. But what would you say is the most unique aspect of your approach to coaching? Well, well, you know, I don't know how unique it is. I'll, I'll be honest with you, but I'll tell you what really, what I cherish about coaching is my, I think it's my responsibility to truly meet the person where they are, but then also adapt my style. Mm -hmm. By nature, I'm a storyteller. By nature, I'm a connector. But I coach a lot of people, for example, in tech, who are neither of those things, mm -hmm. right? And so it doesn't do me any good to come in with metaphors and analogies and telling stories, because that's just not meaningful to them. It's meaningful to me, but not to them. And one of the things that I really love is finding out, like, how am I going to help this person see this issue in a different way? And that I need to flex and I need to be really like a kind of seer about what's going to be meaningful to that person. I love doing that. <laughs> that process of discovery where you're really like almost, there's almost an ex um, exploration to it where you just, you're moving in and you have an idea of who someone's going to be. But obviously just the relationship that you have in coaching is by definition, it's fairly deep and fairly complex and very empathetic. And so what you're going to discover is gonna tell you everything about how you can help. Um, and that's, that's powerful. Um, and not, actually I, th I do, I, I was gonna, I'm gonna contradict myself. I was gonna say not a lot of people do that. I feel like in a, amongst all the people I've talked to, many coaches cherish and value those early steps, that discovery process. And they really feel like that that's where the real value, the real skill can be for a coach where you could really just make those connections, build that bridge that eventually the, the coachee, the trainee is going to cross with you. Um, it seems pretty powerful to me. <laughs> yeah, it can be. Absolutely. Also, I'm aware that in the way that I work, that often people in their lives do not get listened to 
the way I listen to people. Mm. Their, their spouses, their partners don't listen to them that way. Their people at work don't listen to it because that's not what most of us do. And by the way, until I became really skilled as a coach, I didn't listen to most people that way. <laughs> and most people do not listen to me that way. So I'm aware that one of the gifts that I bring to my clients is a kind of listening that is transformative. Transformative. That's another very good word for it. Um, because it's, it's, you hear, I hear the term, at least I was going to say you hear, I hear the term active listening quite a bit as a, <clears throat> a skill a value that people are embracing where you're not just sitting back and listening or doing that sort of classic waiting for your turn to speak, where you're sort of formulating what your response to what someone is saying is going to be, which I don't want to completely devalue that because it's important to, as you're bringing in what someone is presenting to you, what they're saying, what they're showing you, it is important to be doing some processing because you have things to give too as a listener. Um, but I feel like it, for most people, it's way up here on the priority list. They're mostly using all their brain function and all of their awareness to process how they're going to respond, what they're going to feel and say about a certain thing. And I love the elevation of the virtue of active listening um, or just basically listening, genuinely listening to really give, give a person, to give people the space that they require to express themselves and to give them a, a landing place for, and also to, for you to be able to demonstrate that what they're saying is actually getting to you. And I just, I, I, there, there's so, there's so much to it. Um, I learn a little bit more about it every day, especially getting to host a podcast. I imagine, and we'll talk about that in a second. I think I imagine hosting a podcast too. There's a participatory element. There is a listening element, active and passive. There's so much that goes into um, just a good exchange, um, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a coaching, whether it's one-to-one, one, one to a team, maybe it's one to many, you're still connecting. Even if there's a thousand people in, the, in an audience and you're trying to connect to them, there's still a lot of listening going on, even though you're doing all the talking, you know? Um, so speaking of doing all the talking, I should get back to asking you questions. <laughs> um, let's talk about what you're doing like right now in your coaching business. Obviously right now we're 18 or so months into a global pandemic. Um, just about every coach I've talked to has had to make at least one, if not multiple strong pivots. Um, and most every coaching practice seems to me to be thriving. So how have you been not to put you on, on the spot, but how have you been thriving in the last, you know, 12 to 18 months? And what are you doing right now? Fine. Oh. Wow, we just had a glitch, but oh. I think we're okay. I think we're yeah. good. <laughs> so uh, two things. Hmm. One is I did a major rebrand that took us about 14 months and it was fantastic. It was a wonderful experience for me. I got to lead a team. I got to really think deeply about my business. Um, it was it was just great. And that launched a couple of months ago. So that's one of the things that is helping us thrive. Um, it's 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 been great. Just it's created new energy. But also, I created a whole new arm of the business. So that's been exciting to just manage and kind of figure out how it works and running my business in a new way because I've been. I've been running my business for a long time. And so it's really fun and energizing for me to be doing something new. That's one thing. The other thing that's been interesting is um, my, pro my portfolio of business has changed. That before the pandemic, I was doing, I would say, 80% of my business was my corporate clients, big, large-scale coaching engagements all over the world. And about 20% of my clientele were people who reached out to me from the podcast and would uh, you know pay me individually out of their own personal checkbooks. And so it was a very different price structure, very different kind of co coaching structure. Yeah. I would say that that is now about 70% of my business at the moment is from my podcast folks and 30% of my business is corporate because the, the, there's been so much disruption in the corporate world that there's not a lot of investment in the moment, at least in the, at the large scale that I work at. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of investment in the moment at, um, in you know, executive development. That's just kind of on hold. It's not going to go away. No. And it's actually just starting to come back. So that's what's new and different and thriving for me. And it's, uh, it's wonderful. It's really been just energizing and delightful. I love that, that ability to, and I feel like this is, this is at the foundation of the entire coaching endeavor. The relationship is it's, it's something that you establish and you do and you get better at, but it also there are these moments where it just, it, it evolves, it transforms um, into 
whatever it happens to need to be. And I love how much energy, you, it's so clear that you've gotten so much energy from it. Cause I, I, I see you and you, you're sort of a little bit like me in this regard where I can like, you lean forward and you start to talk about the things that are like, that are happening in your coaching business and just about coaching in general and specific to you. And just the excitement, it just comes through the screen. <laughs> it's I'm awesome. glad it does. Yeah. Well, I, and it is how I feel about it. It's, it's a delight. Yeah. Let's see, we're getting close to the end of our time. We try to keep this to our, our 10 minute goal. Um, and I feel like I could talk to you for hours, uh, but I won't keep you for quite that long. Let's see, what would you say, this could be interesting. What was the biggest challenge that you're facing right now as a coach? Um, and we don't have to take anything off the table because obviously a lot of us are facing a big challenge with the global pandemic, but what would, how would you describe your, your biggest challenge right now as a coach? Hmm. So I'm going to answer in a slightly different way. One of the things that my clients have always asked me to do as I coach them, they'll often say to me, hey, you know, I've got a retreat coming up. Will you facilitate the retreat? Mm -hmm. And I've always done large scale facilitation, teamwork, all that. One of the big challenges for me right now is my teamwork, the work that I do with senior leaders and their teams mm -hmm. because of all the hybrid that's involved, all the kind of disruption that's in their own business, but also how do we do teamwork literally like on Zoom? How do we build those teams again when we're not in the office? Yeah. One of the big challenges I find for leaders, but also for the teams in general is we th there are lots of advantages to being on Zoom, but the disadvantages, which is we don't get a lot of data about each other anymore. It used to be that if I was managing someone, I could just look up, look across the office, see that person, and I would get data about them and I would have some feedback to give them later in the day, right? Mm -hmm. Like we don't have that anymore. So there's all kinds of things that are missing, which creates a different challenge and facilitating remotely and creating meaningful team experiences remotely is a challenge. It's not impossible. I've done it, but it is a challenge. Yeah. And I, I think that's a, that, that, that is a common, a common song that I'm hearing whenever I ask that question is that, yeah, it's, it's, and, and everybody I talk to has the same approach where it is, it's a challenge, it's new and it's hard, but not impossible. I feel like there's a, there's a, a lot of, there's, there's an inclination and instinct to throw your hands up and be like, well, I, you know, I can't see anybody. I don't, they're not here in person. We're just missing so many things. And that's true. I feel like there's almost a uh, improv comedy approach where it's not no, but I can't it's yes. And it's like, okay, yes. Huge challenge. I see it. Also huge opportunity. You know, that, that classic, that classic proverb, uh, yeah, it's, it's been said so many times, but basically crisis and opportunity, and they're basically the same thing. <laughs> so here we are making, making the best and making some really, really, really good good work out of this, making a meal out of these times. And I think that's, I think you're a great example of that. Um, no, thanks. Yeah. I want to give you just a, a little, a little time to talk about, uh, talk about your podcast. I love my podcast. It is called the look and sound of leadership. Uh, as you said, it's 13 years old. Um, it, yeah, it has been incredibly meaningful to me. It's, I, I, I know that I've touched a lot of lives and that's important to me too. You know, I'm a coach. So I, you know, I got a lovely letter yesterday from a woman who went, I just need to let you know, you've changed my career, right? There's a woman I've never met. So that kind of thing. It's, awesome. it's yeah, right. It's lovely. Yeah. So the, the look and sound of leadership podcast has been great. It's taken on a life of its own. It's much bigger than me now. And I'm grateful for that. I mean, isn't that what we're after building something a little bit bigger than ourselves? Well, making a difference. <laughs> and making, you know? well, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like that letter from that woman, clearly I've made a difference in her life yeah. and it's someone I didn't even know. So yeah. that's, that's cool. That's beautiful. And I feel like that's as good a place to end on as any. Um, like I said, I would love to go on with you, but time is of the essence. Of course, I love that clock right there in the background. Tom, thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, thank My you. pleasure. Thanks. Then thanks to all the listeners. I, I do this a lot. I look around whenever I'm whenever I speak to the listeners as if they're in the room with me. These habits I've picked up with all this remote working that I've been doing, I just sort of pretend, just playing pretend, even as I'm doing very real, very powerful, very lovely things with lovely people. Um, so thank you to everyone, and we will talk to you soon.